Welcome to the Rich Report, a podcast with news and information on high performance computing. Today, my guest is from the San Diego Supercomputing Center. We have Rick Wagner. Rick, welcome to the show today. Uh huh. Thanks, Rich. Glad to be here. Well, well, thanks for coming on, Rick. You know, I was intrigued by. Uh, got a note last week that you guys were doing some kind of contest or game show or something in your booth. C- can you tell me more about that? Yeah, it's not. It's not a. It's not a game show. Um, although I think a lot of people are going to want to show up to watch. Yeah. Uh, it's a video game competition. Okay. Um, we've got one of our tile display walls. You know, one of the ones that we've been bringing for a few years, and we've hooked it up a cluster of Raspberry Pis. Because video gaming is awesome, but video gaming on 15 LCD panels uh, is even better. Mm-hmm. Okay, so 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 why Raspberry Pi? What, what was the hook here? The the cluster itself, uh, I built with some undergraduates and high school students because I wanted to build something that people could look at and understand what a cluster is. You know, something very approachable, something very exposed. So just like Comet, um, our new system that we'll be landing. This is, you know, a educational cluster for the other 99%. Okay, so 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 tell me more about Meteor. Now, this is a cluster built from these Raspberry Pi devices, correct? That's right. So, Meteor, 15 Raspberry Pis to drive the 15 displays, plus one to sort of be the running the game and stuff like that. Uh, I think when you look at it and you see some of the pictures, you'll see the, that the rack we built for it is pretty cool. We use some... You know, bright red fluorescent acrylic. All the Raspberry Pis are exposed so that people can see the cables connecting them, which is, you know, 50% of understanding what a cluster is, is figuring out where all the cables go. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, just a simple Linux cluster that, you know, when the students get onto it, they can figure out and they've been able to put code onto it really fast. So it's there to to teach people. And I actually think that on the show floor, there's going to be a lot of folks who aren't the major techies who are going to want to come and look at this thing and get a better understanding of why SE13 is going on and what it means to do parallel computing. Yeah, yeah. So maybe we should backtrack a bit, uh, Rick. What is Raspberry Pi? I mean, it's an ARM-based uh, device, but uh, can you tell us more about that? Absolutely. The, the Raspberry Pi is a project from England mm-hmm. that wanted to build an accessible computer for kids. Yeah. to get them excited in the way we were when we started playing with Logo on the Apple IIEs or you know, people before us were doing the Heath kits. So the Raspberry Pi itself is what's called a system on a chip. Everything is attached to the printed circuit board. You've got your ARM processor, you've got your 512 megabytes of RAM, network card, USB, HDMI video out, uh, the SD, SD card input, and the GPIO pins, which is something that we don't use very much on Meteor, but a lot of people do, and this is raw access to the the hardware. Now, the kicker as to why the Pies have been so insanely successful is that they are thirty five dollars for all. something that is yeah. That's it, thirty five bucks out the door. If you've got an SD card and a mini USB cable, mm-hmm. you can probably get going with one right away. People are using these for making and hacking and teaching and. It's one of those things that people like myself, we just start getting ideas of what to build. Right. What I built was a cluster for students. Other people have built all kinds of things. <laughs> so, so Raspberry Pi, I mean, that's that's an exciting, you know, that those things are shipping now. But, uh, uh, Rick, you, you've basically built a Beowulf cluster out of these things, haven't you? Oh, exactly. Yeah. Um, and as a matter of fact, if you come to the booth and look at it, you'll even see that, you know, the way we built the cluster was to put an operating system on the little SD card and then we stuck a sticker on each card to say which node it was. Mm. And it was the fastest work of building a cluster with a 10-year-old ever. So my son lent a hand. <laughs> All right. So, so that's the device that's powering the display for this game. Tell me more about the game. Do, can people walk up and participate, or how does it work? So there's two parts. One, okay. we're going to do a lot of open gaming. We want people to come up, drop by the booth, give the game a try. Uh, we went out and bought one of the XRK tank sticks. So uh, if you've ever seen the Johnson brothers from Aeon Computing, they're one of the people that have helped support this. Mm-hmm. And they're a couple of big guys. Yeah. And so we got the tank stick because if they, one of them rage quits, I don't want to see my controllers go shattering. <laughs> uh, so you, they'll be open gaming. <laughs> they'll be open gaming during the day. Uh, but then in the afternoons on Tuesday and Wednesday, we're doing a bracketed single elimination tournament, and we want to get 64 people through those two days yeah. so that Thursday we can start giving away the grand prize. 
Okay, so what are they playing? I mean, is it World of Warcraft? What is the what is the game? No, nope. uh, well, the, the the hint is kind of in the uh, the name of the competition, which is the Long Tail Death Match. <laughs> They're really playing something that looks like if anyone remembers the Tron Light Cycles arcade game, yes, or the Snake game, things like absolutely. Uh -huh. um, it's going to be a meteor versus a comet. So oh. if you can remember the Tron Light Cycle game, you stand yep. a pretty good chance. All right, all right. So exciting. Now, that'll be going on all week. When is the final round in the uh, SDSC booth? The final round is going to be on Thursday from 1030 to noon. Okay. And this is when somebody is going to win a mini cluster. Aeon Computing has donated uh, four or five Raspberry Pis. i got to double check but also four LCD panels, all the cables, SD cards, power supplies, everything, so that if you want to rebuild a cluster just like Meteor, you can get started. Well, that's a pretty exciting prize. Uh, uh, um, so is there a way to register ahead of time, or you gotta you got to come to the booth and, and put your name down? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. you, you got to come to the booth, sit through a talk. We try to keep our talks a little bit lighter and faster this year. You know, we always want people to come to the booth and not feel like they're just attending um, to enter the competition. And I think with our lightning rounds and our excitement over Comet uh, coming this year, it's going to be fun to come by anyways, but come in, sit through a talk, and then join the competition. Of course, you're welcome to come by and do some open gaming ahead of time, but I really think in, you'll want to come and check us out. Yeah, well, you guys always have uh, terrific displays at, at SDSC booths, so uh, uh, we'll definitely be looking for that. So, so, so Rick, hey, I really want to thank you for uh, coming on the show today. Rich, I am always glad to do it. I look forward to seeing you on the show floor. Yeah, absolutely, and let's go, let's go to the Beowulf bash and uh, toss a couple beers back and, and discuss the strategy. How's that sound? That sounds excellent. All I'll right. be glad to. All right, folks. That's it for the Rich Report. Stay tuned for more news and information on high-performance computing.